everybody, one of the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Hero Quest, the Jungles of Delthrak Quest Pack that was kindly sent along by Avalon Hill and Hasbro um, as a complimentary review copy. Now this is a new standalone quest pack to add to the core Hero Quest box set. It adds two new heroes. We have the Explorer and the Berserker, who are sort of like new versions of old characters. The Dwarf um, is replaced by the Explorer, sort of, in a new sort of like methodology of, of playing a Dwarf character. And the Berserker is a version of the Barbarian who can basically trade everything to attack, 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 attack. Now, this is a um, sort of like a ladder adventure, if you know what that means, where the outcome will be different every single time because there's kind of an A path, B path, and C path that you can take whenever you complete a mission. Um, and so it has variable sort of like success and failures and it's sort of a different way that the adventure can roll out depending upon what you do during the course of each mission. Um, it has 15 separate missions inside of it and we get a bunch of new bad guys and good guys. Uh, two, which I do like this, you get um, sort of two different gender codes for each of the character models. So you get um, a male and female uh, coded um, explorer and a male and female coded berserker. You get some train packs, you get a little sort of like supply cache and a statue some crystals and some fire, uh, two new ranged goblins, uh, two new ranged skeletons, uh, some raptors, uh, as well as a pet raptor, if you want to have a pet, and a pet um, wildcat too. And then we get uh, raptor, wild raptors, we get a big giant snake and a spider, uh, and some tons of tokens, as well as the mighty ape, the king of the apes, uh, who you will fight. So here's our mission book. It's pretty standard to the ones that we've seen so far inside these adventure packs, um, and has basically everything you need uh, including like alternate rules. So if there's alternate keywords you might have, you don't need any of the other expansions to play with this expansion. They've been really good about putting everything that you would need to, to complete the adventure in this one box. We get some new tiles to overlay the tiles in the box set, uh, some status counters and swarms for the various things you can encounter over the course of the game. You can see here our little duck boards, webbing, other things that might arrive, and then these little swarm markers uh, that can latch onto you and drain your health over the course of the game. You get the swamp things. These are really nice. Uh, once again, all pre-assembled plastic miniatures. These, I'm really impressed with the HeroQuest miniatures, to be honest. They are, they, they, if, if you're looking for like a first miniature kit for someone who's not super into tabletop gaming, Coming pre-assembled is nice. They're very clean, no mold lines uh, really to speak of. Like they, they can paint right out of the box if you just want to prime them. And the detail is uh, sunk enough that they'll take washes and stuff like that. If you want to use contrast paints uh, or speed paints of any kind, they will paint up real quick. There's our mail coated Berserker. Uh, and then we get some of these translucents. They've been doing this a lot lately. Translucent plastics for the crystal stacks, which also go on top of these. And we got our card pack. And then the bottom here, our big beasties. So we get the giant spider, although he has another name, but he's a giant spider. Uh, and these are on the two wide bases, our giant ape and our giant serpent. Uh, we get our evil cult leader wizards and these nice terrain pieces, including a whoa, supply cache. It's like treasure chests and stuff that's been like, yeah, there's a painting, which I think is funny. Um, our little mentor statue, a couple of the arranged skeletons, and that is it. So the mission itself, or the, the adventure itself, is going to incorporate a pick a path sort of phenomenon. Um, you're going to get everything you need to play with the contents in here, including all the cards. So I'll go through in a second. But you don't necessarily start at the stairwell because you're in an outdoor area. The dungeon starts to represent things like um, the interiors of buildings and stuff like that. And you'll also have these exterior elements that you can lay over top. So you usually enter and exit through a door, which is slightly different. Uh, the hero selection, you're going to have four different uh, heroes that you can take. If you don't take four, you can take some of the monsters, or not the monsters, the uh, animal companions instead. Uh, you get additional treasure cards to add to your treasure stack. You get dread spells for the cult leaders. And then you're also going to get the rules for large mar monsters and threatened and unthreatened mutants. So the dread spells, the two dread spells that can be cast, actually you know what, we'll go through those afterwards because we'll do them when they're in here. We'll look at the, the monsters first and the heroes. So the Berserker, you can see it's coded two ways. Three attack, two defense, seven body points, two mind points, two red dice of movement and a broadsword to start off with. And he has three skills. Enrage, as an action, you can lose two body points to immediately make an attack. Um, add an additional number of attack dice to the number of body points you lose. Uh, maybe use once per quest. So basically, you can make a second attack during your activation, and you can add a number of attack dice equal to the amount of damage you take. Retaliation, you can't use it until you have five or fewer body points. You may use this skill when you take damage from an adjacent monster, immediately make an attack against the monster. It can be used once per quest. And then Frenzy, this skill can't be used unless you have three or fewer body points. As an action, you may make a single sweeping attack against all the monster adjacent diagonally. So you just do like a, you do like a hurricane kick basically around. 
Uh, then we've got the Explorer. This is the uh, dwarf character, and again, cards for both coatings. Um, you get two attack, two defense, five body, and five mind. You start with a hand axe and two red dice of movement. And you have um, the same sort of trap skill as the, uh, the dwarf, so you can disarm traps by rolling a combat die and rolling a black shield. Uh, the Trapsman has once per turn, when you move on to a square adjacent to one or more tracks, Zargon must alert you. Zargon does not have replaced trap tiles on the board, they just uh, sh tell you where it is, and it is not triggered. So basically, once per turn, you can just mind sweep a trap, which is very cool. Um, I forgot to mention that you can't use uh, ranged weapons if you're the Berserker. That's one of your, your one key traits. Uh, Danger Sense, once per turn, when you draw a hazard card from the Adventure deck, you can return the card to the bottom of the deck and draw a new card. And Treasure Hunter, whenever you draw a card with treasure, you get an additional 25 coins. So a very cool like support character in form of the Explorer. And your two characters, you get the Saber Fang, that's what it's called, um, which you can take instead of a hero if you don't have as many players. Uh, 10 squares of movement, two attack, three defense, five body points, and one mind point. Um, and it can move uh, through squares containing pit traps and hindering terrain, but cannot perform other actions, use potions or open doors, except for move, attack, and defend. Uh, Raptors, same thing. They can open doors, though, because they're clever girls. Uh, movement 8, 2 attack, 2 defense, 3 body, and 3 minds. And then we have our new monsters. The Spawnlings. These basically attach to you as a token. They're one of the cardboard tokens over here. Uh, you can see there's one for each type. Um, Venomous and Agile. If a hero ends a turn with a Spawnling tile on their card, take a body point of damage, and each Spawnling attached them, and they can't be defended against. Um, things that will spawn are things like the Serpent, Spawn Venomous, um, or the Blight Crawler, Spawn Agile Venomous, and that's it. So they will they will drop guys on you. Uh, the Skull Blight is the uh, the sort of like swamp thing. Six squares of movement, three attack, two defense, two body points, and zero mind points. So it's basically like a big shambling I don't know swamp monster. Your skeleton archers they're basically just skeletons, but they can make attacks at range. And if you make attacks up close, they drop to one to attack dice. Uh, same with the Goblin archers, they can attack a number of range squares, um, but they only roll one when they're next to you. Serpent, he's one of the big boys. Movement 8, 4 attack, 3 defense, 6 body points, and 3 mind points. And the Blight Crawler, one of the other big guys, uh, 4 attack, 4 defense, 3 body points, and 4 mind points. And it has Agile and Venomous. It ignores the, um, the difficult terrain, and Venomous, of course, is going to poison you. Raptor has Clever Tactician. Uh, it moves 8, attack 3, defend 2, body points 2, and mind points 3. The Blightweaver can cast uh, the Falling Dread spells once per quest, Channel Dread and Creeping Grasp. I'm going to look at those now. Creeping Grasp, the spell will be cast on any one hero to ensnare them with vines. Place a Grasping Vines tile under the targeted hero. They must roll a combat die, and if they roll a skull, they suffer one body point of damage and are restrained by the vines, unable to move from that square. The target hero or another adjacent hero can spend an action to destroy the vines, freeing the ensnared hero, and then Channel Dread. You roll a red dice if you cast it on a hero. Uh, on a 1, 2, or 3, they resist. On a 4, or 5, they take a body point damage. On a 6, they take 2. And then we got our new treasures and our extra um, potions we can get to. And then the giant ape, uh, he's just agile, so he ignores the terrain stuff. Movement 8, attack 4, defend 3, body 7, and 5 mind points. He's one of the big boss level characters in the adventure. Um, I'm not going to spoil the new treasure cards because they're fun to discover by yourself, but you can buy four new potions. Uh, there's artifacts in here as well. Potion of Healing, uh, 500 gold coins, uh, get a dice worth of body points back. Potion of Elder Wisdom, this one's great, especially for the Berserker. Get a skill or spell back that you previously used in the adventure um, and use it again. That one's for 400 gold coins. And then the Spider Step Elixir, you can ignore Hindering Terrain, Furniture, and Monsters and Pit Traps. Uh, but if you take any damage, then it goes away. And the Potion of Serpent's Blood, um, it's worth 50, and you get rid of the Paralysis caused by Venomous Creatures. Because when you are paralyzed, you cannot move! Um, the Ember Rot Diadem is the point of this whole adventure, which is an artifact you can find at the end of it. Um, and it's gone lost inside the jungle. So you are sent by Mentor to try and find it. And the 15 adventures you're going to go through will lead you, hopefully, to a conclusion where you have captured it by the end. Um, and again, I'm not going to spoil the adventures either, but like I said, there are 15 of them. What I do like, in addition, is you can rank up the difficulty of this, where you have a downed mechanic. Standard is as written in the rulebook, but heroic is... When you go to your last body point, you get placed uh, on a skull tile, uh, and then the skull tile is flipped. And if uh, you're on the flipped skull, so the little skull shape, uh, or sorry, skull shape of a dice, when the next turn starts, basically you have two turns where you're bleeding out. If no one heals you with a healing potion or a healing spell, then you're removed. So you're not just instantly removed as you are in the core game. You have kind of a bleed out mechanic, and if you're attacked again, you also die. Um, I really like that ability. There's also story mode where you just want to complete the story. 
it's kind of like Fallout or um, Elder Scrolls Bethesda style games. If there are no monsters on the board and only heroes remaining, and at least one hero is still standing, everybody who was downed starts to recover a single body point per turn. So you basically get your health back after each encounter when you clear the board, as long as one person's still alive. I like both those modes. I feel like story mode will be really good for playing with like, let's say kids or newer players. Um, and heroic mode is for like more advanced role players who might want just a little more crunch kind of the game mechanic getting removed. Um, yeah, animal allies, order of play. Uh, a round is a sequence in which uh, heroes take their turns. If there's monsters active on the board, the round includes Zargon and ends after Zargon completes their final turn. Uh, under the order, order of play optional rules, heroes may decide the order in which they take their turns in a round. It's basically initiative, um, but then you're stuck like that as soon as a combat starts. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one because one, I like the fact that it can conclude, like I said, there's, there's 15 adventures, but they are uh, typically followed by like path A, path B, path C. So it's gonna end different ways each time. And I'm, again, I'm not gonna ruin it because I want people to be able to do the adventure without having any um, sort of like uh, spoilers. And that gives us some longevity. You could play it more than once and have a different conclusion, use a different mix of heroes. And the design sort of like philosophy of making a, a, a supplement where you don't need anything outside of the box is really valuable because it means that every single one of these can be standalone on the core set and you're not worried about needing additional stuff. You can freely mix and match new heroes in and stuff like that, but this adventure and the core box are, are basically the modular put together that make this system great. Um, and what I do really appreciate is the fact that the core Hero Quest box is 40 years old. It's an unchanged game from when it originally launched, right? We're looking at roughly four decades of Hero Quest being the same, but they're introducing new and modern game mechanics through these supplements. So if you want a more modern game experience, picking up one of these box sets really does inject a whole bunch of new stuff like the, the optional ways to play, the optional death mechanics, the allies, the new sort of like subclasses of character like the Berserker and the Explorer for the Dwarf and the Barbarian. Um, Super pumped for more of these. I really want to see another one of these that does the Wizard and the Elf, which I assume they're going to make, like alternate classes for them. Um, and if I was to pick one of these supplements to add to the core box right now, I think it would be this one because this feels like it has the most replayability, animal companions and subclasses for the existing characters, as well as just like a good mix of like terrain and new monsters. Just adding the ranged skeletons and goblins makes the core even hero plus experience really cool. Uh, and then last but not least, you can get the companion app. If you don't want to have a, a dungeon master and you want to play this uh, just supported by like an AI uh, to do all the monster movement and stuff like that, you can download that too. So there it is, Hero Quest Jungles of Delthrak. A really good expansion, I think, to this new edition, this core modern hero quest um, that I'm pretty excited about. And to be honest, I think reflects some just really good, smart, modern game design. They're not messing with what made this game great, you know, almost four decades ago, but they're adding in more modern things and not too much. It's not an overwhelming amount and a lot of it's approachable and optional. So good job once again to Avalon Hill um, and of course their uh, manufacturer Hasbro for their good work. Uh Fuck, it just turned off and on again. All right, I'm gonna do that X flow again, sorry. <clears throat> so once again, big thanks to Hasbro and Avalon Hill for sending this along for me to check out and for you guys for watching. Till next time, I'm Ash. Have a great day.